want to say first of all is that from both papers together, it's quite clear that when we think about the child in time, that we're not thinking about a solipsistic child at all. So in Jimmy's paper, in, in Young Lives Overall, not only what, do we see the families really working, trying to devise strategies for uh, helping these children to progress, or, or the one case you gave, but in general, to progress in time and progress being something that they defined. But also, societies joined together in the United Nations have thought about what they want for childhoods around the world and what would be good. The Millennium De Development Goals are about that. And so, too, what Mary talked about, very much roots and wings, really struck me that together the two papers are talking about normative prescriptions mm. over time for what ought to happen with children. So normative prescriptions about what they ought to do and normative prescriptions about what the results ought to be. And uh, these are normative prescriptions that you know many of us would sign up to. But nonetheless, those are prescriptions that are culturally produced and then globally as well produced in particular contexts. So the child not just um, you know, by themselves or in the family. And particularly with Mary as well, I loved thinking about this notion of roots and wings. And, and quite often people put it as roots and roots, yeah. as, as yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, th the notion struck me um, when, when you were talking about the way in which there's a normative prescription about giving children a past as well, so that one's moving time backwards as well, roots that you can be proud of, or roots that at least you can live with, that are livable. And I think that that's terribly important. And it relates to quite a few papers that have been, because one of the things that, that uh, is happening in Mary's paper and in, in that project and into the future is about the mediation of memories through um, the pictures. I love the notion of the girls returning to look at um, photos so that they could have memories. And um, tying up with uh, uh, Yetta's work on mediation of a different sort, in the literature it's quite clear now that um, many young people uh, mediate their lives and what they ought to remember, what they think about it, through things like texts and the millions of um, images that they have on their smartphones and things like that. And that babies do it too. I mean, so that Kerry Jewett looking at babies and, I and the iPad and so on. So, you know, that is also a period of change, but it's something that um, often when people are talking about mediation through IT, that they worry about with children, but that actually is used as an art technique for, with the, the best possible ways in the world. And all of that made me think, and particularly about the Millennium Development Goals and uh, the Young Life Study, about Gunilla Haldane again and Childers Project. And she's frequently talking there about Childers Project in the home, familiarly. But, um, it really helps us to see at the multiple levels the complexity at which we treat children as projects actually over time and their lifetimes as projects as well. Uh, and it, it brought me again to um, uh, the notion of thinking about the complexity of change and the way in which um, uh, not only are these things imagined very much in a Benedict Anderson type way as imagined projects and imagined communities, so that change could also involve how we, we imagine children differently, mm -hmm. which does happen. It's harder to see how um, the culture and the structure is changing around us and acting as an actor as well, but it does, so adding to the complexity of everything. Uh, and that also um, made me think, particularly with the Young Life's um, work, about the way in which Thinking about the past in the present, or entanglements, for example, has to involve thinking about the histories and the specificities of the histories in the countries in which you're looking at them, which is really important. And, and also made me think about Aftar Bra's notion of interlinkages in diaspora space um, across countries and amongst all of us, indeed, which, which is very interesting. Um, and the, also that. Doreen Massey's notion of time and 
and space being interlinked in geometries and, and you know, very complicated compressions. Because um, certainly in the first paper today, Harriet's paper, um, there, there was thinking about space and it's recurred at various times. But certainly the young lives made me think very much about how time and space yeah, are inextricably linked, even though we theorize them so differently, or omit them, or omit one or the other. But also the two papers side by side made me think about that, because the Bradford childhood is so different from the Ethiopian childhood that was being exemplified. And what's thought to be difficult there is not the same as what's thought to be difficult in the Ethiopian childhood. And um, you know, really, we have to think in complex ways about how, how time and space get compressed together, as well as how cultural practices lead to expectations that pull time. You know, uh, for example, what is it that makes 15 a good age to marry? And not only to marry, but marriage to be a good strategy for that Ethiopian young woman, saving her from drudgery and so on, and uh, does not make it so in the, in the Bradford case. What, how, do, how do cultural expectations and practices pull time in different ways and, and make for um, childhoods that are differentiated in their imaginings over a particular time? And overall, um, uh, relationality was so central to all of uh, everything that you all said. Um, so that familial, familial time and responsibilities being really important in, on the one hand and the other paper, that actually the school time being important. And Ginny talked about the diurnal, the, you know, the importance of looking at the everyday, and made me think about, therefore, two sets of time. When we think about the everyday, we often think diurnally about repetition. And you know the same things. You have to go and get the water. You have to do things. Um, if you're in the north, you, have, or, you know, and indeed in India, you have to shower every day or whatever. You know, all of these repetitive things. But that there, there are also complicatedly intertwining with this whole notion of change. Change um, happening through practices. Um, so not just passively happening, but also change being impelled by the culture and by the global and so on and so forth, never mind all the things that might happen. I mean, if you think, for example, about a childhood in Syria and the things that could happen, not just what's happening now, but, but what, the, what people thousands of miles decide to do or not to your country and your life and so on. Sorry, do you want me to stop? No, no. Oh, I thought you were touching your watch, sorry. Okay. Um, um, I'll be much less okay. <laughs> And um, then thinking about uh, the way in which perhaps time, now you have this model of, of cyclical mm -hmm. notions when you're, when you're thinking about um, core strengths and curiosity and so on. But you know, time, not perhaps as cyclical, but as recursive. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, various things coming back again, rather than seeing development as linear and progressing upwards, but maybe as cyclical and so on. So that um, uh, the way in which, for example, time is comparative progression for um, Haymont, Haymont, sorry, um, in, to in notions of a better life. That's definitely a comparative progression in the imagined future. Um, and the way marriage deals with that, and the way in which having a child, uh, knowing that, that she will for her husband, allows her to imagine a future where she can help her, her mother and still have a better life to some extent, means that we have to see um, progression not as this linear, uh, upward development, but actually a comparative progression, as well as that children are all the time changing and that things are, are going on in their lives. I've probably got, gone on for long enough. Okay. Um, other notions that I like, just as I sit down, are around interdependence in the relationality or not, and how we don't think about that in complicated enough ways, but yet we all know that we're very much interdependent and over time, and again, that, that shifts in the way that we are. And endings in Mary's, because you know the interdependency there is created partly through the school, um, uh, in a, a very clear intervention, but the way in which um, we also don't theorize enough endings 
you know, sometimes we theorize starts, but what is it to end? We know, for example, that when children go to secondary school and there's that form of ending, that they um, regress developmentally. You know, sometimes people quantify it as about a year and so on. So the endings have some impact on, on where children are placed. But we don't enough think about it. And often, whether it's research and the ending there, uh, temporally, or it's um, uh, an intervention that stops, we don't theorize enough what's happening when that, that occurs. Okay. Thank you.